Well, I've entitled this message, In the News. And of course, there's a lot of news happening right now. However, there's a lot of news about a few subjects. Racism is, being, is one of them, of course. Uh, the virus is another. Finances, the world finances is another. I love the words of Winston Churchill, who said this, never waste a good crisis. <laughs> Do you love that? Never waste a good crisis. You know, if you're going to have a crisis, then make the best of it, right? Get the most out of it. Because invariably, a crisis will bring change. It causes us to respond. We have to respond. If we just go limp, we just let it happen. Well, you know, we're letting go of any measure of control we might have. Of course, as Christians, we trust in a living God to direct us, to give us wisdom right in the middle of that crisis. But those words, never waste a good crisis. Powerful. Well, in the news, of course, of recent days has been... Um, Racism. I'm not going to make this the whole subject. I've already created a YouTube on this uh, just in the last week. Been teaching or just speaking really more from my own thoughts more than teaching on that subject. But I love the words in uh, the Bible in Galatians. Uh, I won't place the words up on the screen today. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, it may sound simplistic to you, but when Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself, when we do that, we no longer see, we, we no longer see color, we no longer see gender as more important, whether that's a male or a female, we see a Christian brother or a Christian sister. Now, you know, that, that just may seem a very simplistic answer. And my personal view is that, well, racism has been around ever since Noah's days in so many ways. You look way back to his children and soon thereafter, not long after, there was racism. So I don't know what we're going to do about that on a world scale. But I'll tell you what, the Christian church has a voice. And as the Christian church... We are to love one another, black or white, any race. And in fact, I do believe the Christian church does a very good job of this. And we are to be encouraged to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. There's a lot of change happening, isn't there? And, uh, you know, in the news is change of companies. And some are progressing forward and doing well. I've heard some magnificent stories of how some companies have been creative and uh, are doing better now than what they were before. We're seeing this in the life of the church worldwide. I think a lot of rubbish has been exposed. You know, uh, I think, look, the days of screaming and yelling at people that, you know, this is the voice of God and you're going to have your breakthrough this week, unless it comes from the Holy Spirit, then why are people saying things like that? that create disappointment in others. You've heard me say this before. God often gets the blame for people speaking on his behalf where he never spoke. Now, if God is speaking to us, then let's listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Let's work in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'm looking forward to when church is back and certainly not going to be long. In fact, I believe it's within days or even just a couple of weeks where church is back and church can all be together again and have fellowship which is such an important part you know you can have a friend in fellowship or you can have a friend that's out of fellowship and that's another subject isn't it where fellowship where you share the same values where trust where you trust one another you love one another and you're building each other up that's what fellowship is all about well the Bible has uh, a lot to say about change. I heard this week uh, from Matthew. I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 9. This inspired me in relation to change. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 16. Matthew 9 
and verse 16. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins, or else the wineskins break. The wine is spilt and the wineskins are ruined. Now I'd like you to get the next part. Be listening. You ready? Receive something now. But they put new wine into new wineskins and both are preserved. And both are preserved. Now, there are the old ways. There is the old songs. There is the old understanding. There is the old experience. There is the old revelation. However, he says... Don't throw it away. <laughs> Don't throw it away. You want to preserve it all. You, you want to preserve the new and the old. But God is doing a new thing in this world today. There is no doubt about it. The world has fundamentally changed. We've seen probably 20 years of change within the space of just a few months. You know, th this has been a revolution of change that none of us have experienced before. I think we're still coming to terms with what this with what this last, let's say, three to four months has been all about. And yet we are going to see more and more change as a result of a world epidemic that stopped us, stopped everything. And yet the church continued on, some other companies continued on, people moved forward countries kept going lots of trouble lots of strife we see racism has become a massive topic and i just spoke about that a moment ago goodness me if we could just love our neighbor you know if if every country could get back to the ten commandments that alone would change the course of every country and i think australia needs to get back to our foundation however talking about new wineskins folks as God brings change into your life, you want to not only embrace that change, but create opportunity within yourself to receive it yourself. You receive that change. You become like a new wineskin within yourself. But you don't throw out the old. But they put new wine into new wineskins and both are preserved. Now you'll know, those of you who know me will know that I love, I grew up in the 70s really, I was born in the 60s but really grew up in the 70s so much of my life and change and revelation of who Jesus is was during that decade. And uh, I'll tell you what, there was a move of the Holy Spirit in those days, the like of which was transforming. It was new. A lot of people you know, resisted it, but many others embraced it. And God will place upon you a garment. And I heard someone say just this week, one of the great breakthroughs for them was putting on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You know, this is a deliberate, intentional decision that we make. Folks, what is God doing in your life? Are you resisting? Or are you receiving? Now, I like to go just a little bit slow with things in order to ensure that this is God in my life. God will hurry me on should I need to. However, there are the old ways, aren't they? Now, if you're clinging on to the old and not embracing the new, church may look different. Um, the way we do church, how we go about church and homes and houses, you know, in uh, buildings. But more than that, I think that's the obvious. You know, people hearken back to the early church and they say, well, they just met in homes. Well, that's not, that's not entirely true. They did meet in homes. However, they also met in great auditoriums as well. 
and there were thousands. The Bible says there were 3,000 in one day. Now, that's going to be pretty hard to fit that 3,000 into one home. So some people hold on to something that's not quite entirely true. We're, we're seeing a move of the Holy Spirit of revelation in the church today, where God, who is a God of common sense, is being understood more. We serve a God that is a God of common sense, and yet he is a supernatural God. I believe that the Pentecostal church in particular needs to embrace again the gifts and the moving of the Holy Spirit. Now, we're seeing that not only in Pentecostal churches, but in others, but we need to all embrace the Holy Spirit even more. He will do the clothing, right? This new wineskin. As we walk in the Holy Spirit and he pours in new wine into us, then he will also, if we are submitted to him, surrendered to the Lord, we will say, Lord, I am available. You can imagine the disciples. Now, we know that Peter and Paul had a tiff for quite a long time over this, right? The new way. The early church was trying to come, trying to, come to terms with this new way. And yet, time and time again, the disciples were saying to them, walk in the Holy Spirit. Allow him. Did they throw out the old? Well, no, they still held true to the first five books of the Bible. Right? God didn't change. He's the same. But he's doing a new thing in us. And I believe that new thing requires that men and women of God receive and are open to this change. I uh, see for all of us that we can get the best out of a crisis if we confront it with the Holy Spirit. I believe the Christian church is being called on to lead the way with racism right now, that we show love. Now, Acts chapter 2, verse 46 and 47, they ate their food with gladness, simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with who? All the people. We see on the day of Pentecost, there are all these different peoples represented and this is the look of the church irrespective of color now irrespective of race that we receive and love one another as god as christ has loved us so what's topical on the news well these things are topical on the news and there will be others uh, politically we should be praying for our leaders I'm, I'm always promoting that we do not frustrate our leaders in government, but that we pray for them. We become men and women of God that are celebrated by our leaders, that when they, they don't get a letter from a Christian and go, oh dear, here we go. That if we're going to write a letter, that it's constructive and helpful, that it's with honor and respect. I believe in this hour that the church can rise in great honor, great respect, and lead the way in all these things. Let me read this out to you again as I conclude. It's just a, well, quite honestly, a very short message. But it's a challenge to all of us. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. So, you, you know, you, you, you've got to stay available to what God is doing in your life. For the patch pulls away from the gum. Well, we used to do it this way. Well, all right. Well, God is doing it this way now. And the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins. Or else the wine breaks, wineskins break, and the wine is spilt. And the wineskins are ruined. So, you know, the experiences that we have had are all wonderful in God. I love those experiences that I share in church and with others. But those experiences, although they encourage me and are a blessing, I, I, I definitely don't throw them away. But I'm looking for what God is doing today. And I want to be available in the Holy Spirit for that to be that new wineskin in him that he might pour something new and trust me with it. 
but they put new wine into new wineskins and both are preserved. I pray for you right now that you may be preserved, righteous and holy, that your faith may be strong in the things of God, that you might not steer to the left or to the right. Faith is is obvious is is an obvious teaching right throughout the new testament however it is a gift from god grace is an obvious teaching throughout the bible particularly the new testament but it is also a gift from god what is our gift to god so god has given us so much what is our, our obedience he said if you love me obey me obey my commandments I think this is one of the other topical news events now where Christians are being challenged that it is not good enough just to say, Lord, I receive you into my life. Now I'm just going to go and do my own thing. No. He requires that we follow him. He does the work of salvation. He does the work of building his church. What we have to do is be obedient to him, to spread the good news, to share what we have and to help make disciples with the power and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Now, God bless you. I'd ask that you'd pray about this brief message and what I see as topical on the news now. Pray for government. Pray for this country. Pray for your family. And be part of the solution in the wisdom and the purpose and the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you.